Hello and welcome to another video tutorial for Blender for Dummies second edition. I'm Jason Van Gumster and I'm walking you through all the Blender goodness happening in here. Now, this tutorial is for the end of chapter 7. This is actually putting materials on the eye that uh, I gave in another tutorial, another practical example that's at the end of chapter 5. If you don't happen to have your eye modeled or an eye modeled, uh, no worries. There's a copy of an eye on uh, the website and the DVD that comes with the book so you should be good to go now the issue of course is uh, if you haven't yet created a mis custom materials layout I, I recommend doing so setting something up, something like this up is going to uh, help you a lot in the long run so I have another tutorial for setting up a materials layout I suggest you follow it once you do that, we need to load the eye up in here. Now the eye was modeled without the specific uh, layout. So if I open up the eye model, so just say F1 and say there's the start, or load it up, and I don't have a materials layout. That's a problem. So there's a way around that, and it's not too bad. I'm going to reload my default layout, which I still have my, because I saved my user settings, it's still there. What I'm going to do is when I hit F1 to load this file, rather than double clicking and going, I need to disable the load UI checkbox. Now when I choose this file and open it, now I'm ready to go. I can drop this over to my materials and I'm cooking with gas here. Uh, by the way, I hit that with control space. You can also just click that button there. Now. Now it's time to add some materials. We're going to add actually three material slots to our eye here. Uh, one for the external casing, the, the cornea, and the uh, surrounding area for that. And then we're going to do one for the eye interior, and we're going to do a third material for the pupil. So everything starts with, with the outside, and then we're going to work our way down. So we're going to do the cornea first. To do the cornea first, I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to create a new material slot and I'm going to name it cornea. Not too difficult. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll down to the transparency checkbox here, enable my transparency, and I'm going to set my alpha to 0.5. So it's semi transparent already. But notice it's not semi transparent in the 3D view we should fix that. If we go over here to our object properties and scroll down, there's a checkbox here that says transparency. You click that and whatever transparency value you have in your alpha is what adjusts in the 3D view. So I'm going to set that back down to 0.5. Of course the downside is that it's affecting the entire eye right now. We should go ahead and take care of that and that's going to happen in the next couple of steps here. But the first things first, we want to make sure that we have transparency we can see it in the 3D view. Now that we have that set together, let's actually set up the rest of our materials for the eye because this is obviously not looking like a cornea. It's not looking correct. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our diffuse shader to Ornair and we're going to set the diffuse roughness to 0.3. So I can slide that a little bit if I want or I can just click and type point, uh, 0.3 and let's go with there. Now our specular shader, we're going to switch that over to the Ward ISO so we get a sharper highlight there. It's going to look a lot nicer. And we're going to set the transparency frenal. If we go down here, we're going to scroll that up to 3. So now our center is transparent and the edges are a little bit cloudy. And it gives a nice, nice setup look there. And we have two more steps we need to do here. The problem with, with this setup right now is that the whole encasing and the, the cornea and whatnot is going to cast a shadow on the interior of the eye and we don't want that to happen so I'm going to go down here to the options I'm going to disable traceable so it's not recognized by ray tracing so it won't cast any ray trace shadows and if I go down to the shadows uh, shadow panel I'm going to disable the cast buffered shadow so you can see right there that shadow see the little shadow that was down there it's gone when you disable that so now we have no shadows being cast by our cornea material with that set, we're ready to start making the rest of the materials in here. So we want to do the interior of the eye next. So we scroll back up here. I'm going to add a new material slot. And I'm going to name it eye. And before doing anything else, before assigning it to anything or anything else, let's go ahead and 
get our material settings straight for that. So we want our diffuse color to be totally white. So let's push that all the way up. The intensity will set to 0.9. The diffuse roughness, we're going to put that at 0.5. And we're going to keep this one at the ordinary diffuse shader. That's going to be all right. But our specular shader, that's still that's too sharp for us. So we're going to push that back to the Cook Torrance setup. And so that's much more flattened and diffused. And then down here, we're going to disable transparency because we want it to be solid. Push our alpha all the way up to 1 so it's not transparent at all and then we're going to pull our frenal all the way down to zero so now it actually looks like a solid colored thing and the only last thing we have to do here is make sure that this actually casts shadows as opposed to the exterior so go down here enable traceable in our options and enable cast buffer, sh buffer shadows in the shadow panel and you can see that the shadows show up in our preview again that's all fine and dandy but we actually have to assign that to our eye now in order to do that, we need a tab in edit mode. Now, this eye is joined, so we have the exterior of the eye and the interior eye all part of the same mesh. And if we tried to go in and try and select things like that, it would be a real pain to try and select all of those and figure out which one's which. And I would rather just simply not do that. So I'm going to hit A a couple times until nothing is selected. Now I'm going to hover my mouse over the outside of the cornea piece here, and I hit L. And we'll select all the linked faces because the cornea and, and enclosure doesn't actually connect to the interior eye. I only select that. If I press Z, you can see the interior stuff is still not selected. Now I just hide that by pressing H. And now I have my interior is all that's visible and all that's necessary. Now I can assign this with my new eye material. So if I select everything by pressing A and I scroll back up here, I can assign. But I want to assign this my eye material. So click I, left click assign. You see that changed a little bit wider. If I tab into edit mode, object mode, I'm sorry, I can see that cornea is still transparent, but my interior eye is still solid. Fantastic. Now I need to create a pupil. Pupil is actually really easy. I'm going to create a new material slot by pressing plus here. And I'm going to name this pupil, P-U-P-I-L. And the settings on this are ridiculously easy. Obviously, the pupil, we want the color to be black. So if I go here and scroll this all the way black. But we don't really need that specular highlight. And rather than trying to adjust the intensity and all this stuff in here, it's a lot easier just to click Shadeless. Now this thing is solid black, won't have any shadows cast upon it, won't have any light variances, it'll just be straight black. Now the thing we're going to do after that is actually choose which faces are going to be the black pupil faces, right? So tab back into edit mode, deselect everything by pressing A, and in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my subsurface subdivision surface modifier click my apply modifier cage so I can see things a little bit more clearly and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this face loop here so if I do alt right click I get that face loop now if I do control plus and right there I have everything I need I can double check this here nope we're good to go so all I need to do at this point is assign it. So pupil selected, assign, now my pupil's black. And if I hit tab to go back into object mode, now I have my three material slots set up. I have my interior eye, I have my pupil, and I have my cornea. That's a good starting point, but let's get a little bit more detail because obviously this is a really funky color for for an iris to be. Usually your iris is, you know, some other discernible color that makes a lot more sense. So all of this starts by selecting the eye material. Obviously that's where everything lives. But we need to make sure that it's recognized by vertex paint. So if I scroll down to our options panel again, enable the vertex paint checkbox, now we're ready to actually start painting. In order to paint vertex mode, I'm sorry, in order to paint in vertex paint mode, just click here, go to vertex paint. You can also toggle back and forth by pressing the V key. Now you'll notice that when you switch into vertex paint mode, the entire eye is visible. 
or it's actually not visible because the cornea is blocking everything and it's this really solid white color you can't tell you know if I look at this forward it's just, just like a white circle obviously this needs to be better fortunately we can use the face selection masking button this one right here if I click this notice that that encasing in the cornea all disappeared the reason for that is because when we are in edit mode, if I tab over in edit mode quickly, you'll notice that stuff's still hidden. Anything that's hidden in edit mode, as long as you have the face selection mask enabled, it's also hidden when you're in vertex paint mode. Really handy little tip there. Now, what we need to do is go through and select our iris and start painting that. So, pretty easy. We can tab in edit mode. I'm going to alt right click the one loop, two loops, three loops. So that forms the part of the eye that we're going to be painting on because this is our iris. If I tab back into vertex paint mode, notice that that's highlighted. And if I click here, we may want to include that. Eh, no, we'll leave it the way it was. Alright, so if I'm, in vert if I'm in vertex paint mode here, I'm going to hit T to reveal my tool shelf, and now I have all my paint tools available to me. And in particular, I'm really concerned about painting the iris here. Notice that the pupil is still a different color, but don't worry about that because that's still assigned with this material slot here. So we're only concerned about this part right there and in order to paint that it's actually pretty simple I what if I want my eye to be greenish in color so we choose a green tone and I can go ahead and I can start painting but to make my life a little bit easier I can go paint set vertex colors now I have my base green set and now I can go in and, and add some more you know darker colors darker tones some colors that aren't as uh, neon green so I can put some uh, detail in through here. Now this is also one of those moments where a drawing tablet like a Wacom tablet is going to be pretty helpful for you. And go in here maybe put a little hazel and you can work your way through and do all sorts of good editing and then once you do that we can tab our way back into edit mode and if I invert my selection by pressing control I now I can go in, tab back into vertex paint mode, set this to red, and start painting the back of this thing. Now remember hotkeys, I can hit F and I can increase the size of my brush. And shift F will increase the strength of it. Or I can just use these sliders over here. So I just go in here and start painting my colors the way I want them to be. Now when you're working here, if I want to see what this is going to look like from the rendering side of things, I might get a little disappointed. Simply because if I tab back into, uh, or actually if I switch over to object mode, all of my texturing is gone. Good news is it's actually still there, we just can't see it in the 3D view what you should do is switch to textured view click here or hit alt Z but the problem with textured view is twofold this is too dark and it's obviously not transparent the transparency part we can actually fix I'm gonna hide the tool shelf here but I'm gonna reveal our properties region in the 3D view by pressing in so we have that I'm gonna go down to display and in display there's a shading thing here right now we're on multi texture if I change that to GLSL you start seeing the colors that we've painting showing up. The downside is that it's still really dark, but the reason for that, of course, is our lamp is over here. If I grab that on the y-axis and pull that down here, maybe duplicate it. If I pull it over here, make a duplicate by doing Shift D. Now, now I can actually see what's going on and what this thing's going to look like. And if I push myself back into vertex paint mode, select my eye, vertex paint mode, I can paint from within GLSL, get my colors right in there, 
or I can switch back to solid view and paint like so, which just gives you a little bit cleaner perspective while you're painting. And as you go, you keep going, you keep working at it, and with a little bit of work and a little bit of time, you can have something that looks about like this. Your cornea is transparent, we've got our red back to our eye, and we have our handy greenish iris. That's that tutorial. See you on the next one.